How's it going everyone? Pop-Tart here. Welcome back. Today I'm going to be showing you how to build the Boeing 737-200 in 1.5 to 1 scale. The 737 is one of the longest running airline families in production, and its story began in 1967 with the 737 Original Series, the 737-100 and the 737-200. These two aircraft were developed simultaneously, the main difference between the two being that the 200 had a slightly longer fuselage, and with it, increased capacity. As such, it was by far the most popular variant. Over a thousand of the 200s were produced against the 100's very small 30. So what we're looking at here is indeed the venerable 737-200. As one of the first applications of jet power to the short-haul market alongside the 727, it was operated globally, and I'm not even going to be able to do my usual thing and list a few notable airlines, because it was truly a universal aircraft of its time. Its operation was that widespread. Even today, over half a century later, there are still around 50 in active operation around the world, most of them cargo. No Lenore Aviation in Canada currently operates the most 200s with a fleet of nine serving remote gravel airstrips that modern aircraft simply cannot tackle. So this is just an all-around hugely impressive aircraft, being an icon of aviation history that still proves its worth today. This should be a very fun addition to our Minecraft fleet. So, as for the build itself here, as I mentioned, this is in 1.5 to 1 scale, meaning that every 1 meter in real life is equivalent to 1.5 blocks exactly. If you are building an airport project or something in the scale, this will be perfectly to scale with all of our other 1.5 to 1 aircraft on the channel. If you'd like to get some insight into the process behind building this aircraft, have a look at the time-lapse of its original construction by Zap and Warellas. There should be a card up on screen for that now if you'd like. As for the tutorial, as you may recall, we did make a tutorial on our 737-800 last year, and have had several more conversions off of that. However, this will not be a conversion. This aircraft is different in every way. The wings are entirely different. The engines are the Pratt & Whitney JT-8D low-bypass turbofans instead of the newer CFM-56 series. The vertical and horizontal stabilizers are shorter, and even so, the original series aircraft sit about half a meter lower to the ground than the later versions, so the fuselage is entirely unique for this build. As such, we'll be building this aircraft from scratch today, so if you're wondering why, now you know. For configurations within this tutorial, it's going to be quite straightforward. We don't have any engine options or other such possible differences to cover. I will be covering one thing, though. Since the bucket reverses on the JT-8Ds here are so unique, I'll be showing you how to build a quick and dirty design for that at the end of the video. It may not be the most useful for dioramas or whatever, since I won't be including flaps configurations or anything like that, but I had fun putting it together as my little contribution to the aircraft, and it might be kind of cool for a static display. Anyways, that's what we've got going on there. Now, before we get started, as always, this build does make use of our very own custom Aero Team texture pack. A download link to the latest development version of this pack can be found in the description below if you don't have it already. Now, if you are stuck using the default pack, if you're following along on console or something, I will do my best to show you how to go about building this in default, but please do keep in mind that I highly recommend using the Aeroteam pack instead if you can, as it'll look much better. Anyways, with that all out of the way, let's get going on this tutorial. Alright, so first things first, here's some dimensions for you to help you figure out where you want to put this. This aircraft is 45 blocks long, 41 blocks across, and 17 blocks tall, from the base of the landing gear to the tip of the vertical stabilizer. So just keep that all in mind as you're getting started. Now, as for materials, here in the Aeroteam pack we're using the wool block, coupled with the purple stairs and slabs, for the smooth and shiny wool coloration for the aircraft. If you're in default, you'll probably want to use quartz or smooth quartz as an alternative. However, this is a much more preferable solution here in the Aeroteam pack for both a more consistent and accurate coloration for the aircraft, and the ability to use quartz for doors and other accent details. For the purposes of this tutorial, I'll be referring to these as the wool stairs and slabs, but again, that's the proper stairs and slabs here in the Aeroteam pack. And again, if you are in default and are using quartz, just use that instead whenever I'm building. Anyways, with that all out of the way, let's get going on this tutorial. Alright, so to get started on layer 1 here, if you are building this on the ground, as I am here, you'll be wanting to start layer 1 2 blocks off the ground, with a single block gap between. If you're building this in flight, this obviously won't matter, and you can just start wherever you'd like. But again, if you're building this on the ground, please do keep in mind that one block gap there. So, for layer 1 here, we'll be starting with 1, 2, and 3 wool top slabs going back, just like this. And then 1 and 2 quartz top slabs going back. Now again, there's that difference I mentioned for the accent details, so this is for an antenna detailing here on the underside of the aircraft. Now since we are using quartz to pop out from the wool, if you are in default and are already building the fuselage out of quartz, you'll probably want to use something like uh, polished diorite or cobblestone to uh, accent from the quartz itself. Anyways, once we have that there, it's one more wool top slab going back, then one quartz top slab, 
one wool top slab and one quartz top slab there. Next we have a single upside down wool stair facing backward for another antenna popping out of the underside. Next going back from this here we're going to have a single wool top slab followed by one more out to both sides to make a row of three across the center right here. This will be the start of the wing box on the underbelly of the aircraft here. Next we're going to have another row of three going back and then a third to make a 3x3 three three box, just like this. Ignore my misplacement of those there. Next, going back from the center right here, we're going to have a single polished granite full block. Now, in the aero team pad here, you'll see this is kind of a reddish stone texture. In default, you can just use red concrete in that place. But this is for the beacon light on the underbelly of the aircraft here. And again, we'll have a wool top slab out to either side. Next, going back from this here, we have two wool top slabs going back followed by a stone uh, top slab here going back, which I didn't have in my inventory for some reason. So that's one and two going back right there. Then we have five in total going back right here. One, two, three, four, and five of the wool top slab that is going back from the center right there. Next, coming back to these two stone slabs right here, we're going to grab the polished uh, blackstone brick slabs right here. Out to either side of the second stone top slab back right here, we have one of these, again, that's on both sides here. Now in the aeroteam pack here, you'll see it's this uh, kind of grayish brick texture. This is to replicate a uh, darker vent on both sides of the um, uh, wing box underbelly right here. So that's what that's for there. Then going back from this here, we're going to have a nether brick top slab uh, on both sides right there. And this is for the exposed undersides of the wheels here, retracted into the uh, underbelly of the aircraft. As you'll notice, we're building the inflate version here with the landing gear retracted first, and then we'll be adding on the landing gear at the end of the video, of course, as we always do. But interestingly enough, on the 737 family, as you're probably already well aware, the landing gear aren't covered in flight, so the gear door doesn't entirely cover the underside when retracted. So this is replicating that bit of the wheel rim that then shows uh, out from the underside when the wheels are retracted with that. So, with that rambly explanation out of the way, what we can do now is grab the wool top slabs again, join that up here, three top slabs across the sides there, and then we have four top slabs going back from the nether brick top slabs right there. One, two, three, and four. That'll join that up right there across the back, like so. Next, we're going to come all the way back up to the front here, and skipping this first top slab on the side, from the second top slab here, we're going to place a birch trapdoor out to either side. Now in the air team pack here, this is a wool trapdoor texture. In default, you'll want to use iron instead, probably. But again, color consistency, this is what we're using here to match. Then going back from this here, we have 10 wool top slabs on both sides. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. And 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. And finally, going back from this here, we have a single upside down wool stair facing backwards, just from the center right there. Again, that'll be for an antenna on the underside here. And that is everything for layer one. Alright, so for layer two here, starting from this very first wool top slab that we placed right here, right up at the front, we have a single block of wool right there on top, followed by one and two more going forwards, then a wool top slab on its face right there. Next, skipping this first wool block right here, we have one and two wool top slabs along the sides of those last two wool blocks right there. Now, this is where it does start to get asymmetrical here with the detailing on the forward fuselage. So, I'll be starting on the right-hand side first. Going back from this top slab, we have, uh, I believe this is, five blocks going back. One, two, three, four, and five. On the right side of this fifth block right here, we have a stone button right there. Next, we just have a single block of wool going back, and then one and two blocks of quartz this time. This will be for the forward cargo door on the right-hand side of the aircraft only here. Then going back from this here, three blocks of wool, like so. Now on the left side here, we still have that five blocks of wool going back. One, two, three, four, and five. Then a stone button on the left right there, just as we did on the right. But instead, this time what we're going to do here is place two blocks of wool going back. And then on the underside of this here, we have a single stone button. This is for a static port on the underside of the aircraft here, as are all of these stone buttons, if I didn't mention that already. And that is an asymmetrical detail there. So then going back from this here, we just have four blocks of wool. One, two, three, and four. And that should come flush with the right side there. So, going back from this now, uh, out to either side here, what we're going to do is place a wool upside down stair facing in towards the center right there. That'll be flush with that last block of wool that we just placed right there, and also on top of that uh, wool trapdoor right there from the previous layer, just like this. 
Then going back from this here, we're going to have a corner stair facing forwards, just like this. So that'll make an inlet shape looking just like this. This is for vent intakes at the front of the wing box. And then just to flush this off and kind of clean up the inside look right there, we're going to grab a diorite block and place that going back from both of those wool blocks there. And as you can see here in the air team pack, this is a darker gray kind of brick texture like this in defaults. Uh, you can probably use a gray concrete or something to get that uh, kind of grayish darker look towards the inside of that uh, intake vent there. But this is what we have going on here. So going back from this now, from either side here, back from these uh, wool stars that we just placed, we have 10 blocks of wool. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. That should overhang by one on both sides there. Next, we're going to, uh, let's see, this is also going to be asymmetrical here. So on the right side only here, we're going to drop in a block towards the center right there with a single block of wool. And then two blocks of quartz going back right here. This is for the uh, rear cargo door, which is also only present on the right-hand side of the aircraft. So, on the left side here, that's just going to be three blocks of wool, again coming in towards the center. That should <laughs> come in quite flush there. Next, to seal off the underside right here, instead of just using our full blocks like we normally would to close that up right there, to leave space on the inside for the aft cargo hold right here, we're going to grab the birch trap doors again, and place those on the bottom half of that block right there. That'll give the appearance of being a full block from the underside, while still allowing that space to be preserved there. And we'll be getting to the cargo holds much later in the tutorial with the interior, but that'll just uh, get that kind of started off there. Now, if you are in default and can't have a f uh, full opaque texture like this with the trapdoor, uh, you can probably just use the half slabs instead. It won't cut in too much, but uh, that is what I would recommend doing there. Anyways, we're using those trapdoors there, so we'll just replace that quickly. Alright, so now going back from this here, back from the trapdoor here in the center, we're going to have a single block of wool right here, and then two uh, wool top slabs going back from each of these three exposed blocks right here. One and two, one and two, one and two. And with that, that is everything for layer two. Alright, so for layer three here, we'll be starting right on top of this wool top slab from the previous layer. We have one and two blocks of wool going forwards, just like this. Again, that's starting on top of that wool top slab there. Now going back, out to other side, we'll place four blocks going back. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. Now on the fourth block back right here, we have a wool top slab out to either side, just like this. And before we continue going our way back, we're going to grab a tripwire hook and place that out to either side of the immediate block forwards from that uh, top slab right there. That'll get the pedo tube started on both sides of the nose right there. Now going back from this here, this does get slightly asymmetrical again. So, on the right-hand side only, we're going to be placing two blocks of wool going back. Then we have a stone button on the right side there. Again, that's for a static port detail right there. Now going back, we have 22 blocks of wool from this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, and 22. Like so. Now on the left-hand side, that, pedo, or that uh, static port, rather, not the pedo tube, is not present on this side. So it's just going to be 24 blocks going back. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, and 22. <laughs> 23 and 24. Like so. That's 24. There we go. So, now that we have that, we have two wool top slabs going back from either side right there. Then, starting on the inside right here to close off that gap, we have four blocks of wool going back. 1, 2, 3, and 4. 1, 2, 3, and 4. Like so. Join that up towards the center there to close off that gap from the underside, and then we have a second block going back right there in the center. Next, we're going to be placing a, a, a lever on the underside of that second block back that we just placed right there. This is for another antenna on the underside here. This will be flipped facing backwards, like so. Next, we're going to be doing the same thing that we did last layer. So, two uh, wool top slabs going back from each of these three exposed blocks right here. One and two, one and two, and one and two. And unlike the last layer, that isn't everything for this layer. So we have one last thing to put in here. For this, we're going to be placing a stone button on the right side of this first wool top slab right here, the foremost one on the right side. And as you'll know, in default, or in vanilla I should say, that isn't exactly possible to be placing these details on uh, transparent blocks like this. So what we're going to do 
is place a temporary block out to the side of that block there, and place the stone button there. Now, if you have access to world edit, what we can do is grab a stick or any old item, type slash repl zero to switch this over to the replace tool, select that stone button there by left clicking on it, and then paste over that temporary block by right clicking. So that'll trick that button into staying on that slab there without falling off, and if you don't have access to world edit but do have uh, commands or whatever, and are in a uh, recent enough version, Another thing you can use is the debug stick, if you know how to use that. But otherwise, if you don't have access to either of those, it's just a small detail. You don't have to worry about it too much, but it is those small details that do count. So if you can include that, then I highly recommend that you do. Anyways, with that all out of the way, that is everything for Layer 3. Alright, so for Layer 4 here, we'll be starting right on top of this very first wool block right here, of the two, the foremost one. We'll be placing a single wool half slab on top of it, like so, followed by a block of wool going back. Now out to either side right here, we have three blocks of wool going back. One, two, and three. One, two, and three. And out to either side of that third, we have a single tripwire hook, like so. That should land right on top of the one from the previous layer there, and that'll finish off the pitot tubes on both sides. Next, from that wool block here, going out to the sides, we have two blocks of wool going back on both sides, like this, with a block of quartz behind to start off the forward entry doors. Or, well, the forward door is rather here, the entry door on the left, the service door on the right. So, going back from this now, we have seven blocks of wool going back. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. This will be on both sides. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Next, we're going to grab a torch. And this will be going out to either side of the seventh block right here, on both sides. Now, as you can see here in the arrow team pack, this is a small lamp model on the side right here. This is for the wing light on the side of the fuselage right here. And if you don't have access to the R team pack here, uh, and you don't have access to this custom model, uh, what you can do is either use uh, like a stone button here, or a uh, an upside down wool stair or something of the sort to indicate that um, the presence of that light there. But here in the R team pack, this custom model both well looks <laughs> looks good with the custom model and uh, illuminates with light. But uh, yeah, just indicate that detail in some way there. And then going back from this here, we have four blocks. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. Next, we're going to be placing another block of quartz going back right here. This will be to start off the overwing exit doors. And then we have 14 blocks of wool going back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen. Like so. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen. Next, going back from this here. I'm going to grab the quartz stairs and slabs. For some reason, I don't have the slab in my inventory. There we go. So going back from these wool blocks now, we're going to have a single quartz top slab. And then in towards the center from this, a quartz stair facing towards the center. Like this. Top slab and a stair in towards the center. So this will start off the curvature for the aft doors now. So it falls into a top slab in the outer fuselage layer. And the stair on the inside just kind of helps to round it off from the interior. So... We can throw that away now. Going back from this, we're next going to have three blocks of wool going back from both of these stairs here. One, two, and three. And one, two, and three. We'll join them up with a block towards the center here, then a second block going back. Out to either side of this block, we have a single wool top slab, like so. And on the right side only, it's time to break out that replace tool again. We're going to have a temporary block on the right side of that uh, wool top slab right there, and a jungle button right there. And in the arrow team pack, this is a wool texture. This is to replicate the detail on the real aircraft, which I believe is an antenna. And uh, on the real aircraft, it is indeed white. So, we're going to be using the general button here. Again, if you don't have access to this, something you can use is just a stone button. But, uh, yeah, this is what we're using here. We'll select that, and then... Oops, been a couple takes since I used that last, so slash repl zero. Select, and paste over. Like so. And to finish off this layer, going back from this wool block right here, we have two wool top slabs going back. And with that, that will be everything for layer 4. Alright, so for layer 5 here, we'll be starting off immediately with the cockpit glass. So for this, we're going to be grabbing our green stained glass here in the arrow team pack. This is a black stained glass texture with uh, white borders around all of the edges. In the arrow team pack, the black stained glass is just a solid, uh, translucent black texture with no borders. So... The green texture here is what we'll be using. In default, you'll quite obviously be using black stained glass instead, but uh, that's what we have going on here. So, for this, going back from this block of wool right here from the previous layer, the single one right there, we'll be placing this back at an angle. One single block of uh, black stained glass right there, then out to either side, two going back, like so. 
That'll finish off the cockpit blast for this layer. We can throw that away. Next, going back here, we're going to be coming out at an angle again and placing two blocks of wool going back. One and two. Next, we have a block of quartz going back from both of those right there, with a stone button out to either side. Next, we have a single block of wool right there. And now we're going to be cheating a little bit more. So from here, this is where the windows will be starting. For this, we'll be placing upside down wool stairs facing forwards, but that's a lot of stairs to be placing facing forwards. So it'll make sense in a second. What I'm going to do here is grab the quartz stairs. We're going to be coming to the overwing exit doors right here, this uh, quartz full block in the middle of the previous layer. So on top of this quartz full block here, we're going to be placing a quartz upside down stair facing forwards, just like this. This is going to finish off the overwing exit doors right here. And now going forwards from these quartz stairs, we're going to have a total of 10 upside down wool stairs facing forwards. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. That should come perfectly flush with that wool block right there coming back from the forward doors, just like that. And 10 on the right hand side as well, like so. And now you see why we did that uh, reverse forwards just to get that upside down stairs out of the way. And now, we're going to be doing kind of the same thing again, for exactly the same reason. So, we're going to be coming all the way back to this quartz top slab right here at the, well, towards the rear of the previous layer. On top of this quartz top slab here, we're going to be placing a quartz full block, like so. And just to get this out of the way, we'll be placing a stone button on the outside edge as well. Just like that. Going forwards from both of these quartz blocks, we're going to have a wool full block. And then a total of 13 upside down wall stairs facing forwards. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13. And that should meet up right there with that quartz upside down stair, just like that. And the same thing on the left side as well. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13. Like so. A little bit backwards again, starting from the rear, working forwards, but that just makes the placement of those stairs much easier. So, now that we have all those windows in place, Going back from the aft doors here, from the Scorts full block, on the left side only, we're going to be coming a block in towards the center and placing a row of three wool blocks going back. Back from this here, we have a wool stair facing towards the left side of the aircraft. This is going to be a regular wool stair like this. This will be starting off the stabilizer trim here at the rear of the fuselage. So, back from this now, we have a wool full block with a stone button towards the outside edge. Then on the right side, we're going to be placing a single wool full block right there. Then an upside down wall stair facing towards the right. That's an upside down stair there. This is for the APU air intake on the right hand side of the fuselage. Back from this now we just have a single block of wall right there. Followed by a regular wall stair facing towards the right for the stabilizer trim on the right side. Then a block of wall right there. And again, same thing as we did before. Stone button on the right side. Next, coming towards the center right here we have a single block of wall. Followed by one and two more to make a row of three. On the... Uh, out to either side of this first block of these three right here, we have a stone button, like this, on both sides. Then on the underside now, on this first exposed block of the two right there, so from the center block right there, we have a single jungle button aligned parallel with the aircraft, like this. And to finish off the slayer, going back to this row of three, we have a cobblestone top slab right there. That'll start off the APU exhaust right there. And with that, that is everything for layer five. Alright, so for layer 6, we'll be starting going back from the center block of glass right here, from the cockpit glass. Going back from this, at an angle, we have a wool half slab right there. And behind it, a wool stair facing forwards, like so. Now, to either side of this wool stair, we're going to be placing a nether brick half slab, like this. And this is for the eyebrow windows right here, above the cockpit glass on either side. So going back from this wool stair right here, we have two wool top slabs, like so. And then behind the nether brick slabs right here, we have a wool stair facing forwards on both sides. And now you can see that definition of the eyebrow window a bit more clearly. So, going back from the uh, wool stair right there on the left side, we have a full block of wool. On the right side, it's going to be an upside down wool stair facing backwards, like this. This doesn't impact the outside of the build at all, but it does just get some uh, <laughs> shaping out of the way for the interior when we get to that later. So don't pay attention to that, but that's what's going on there. So, out to either side of those blocks down that we just placed, we have a wool half slab, like so. Going back to this now, we have a quartz half slab on both sides, with a quartz top slab in towards the center to finish off the forward doors right here. Next, going back from these quartz half slabs on the outermost layer, 
we'll be placing a total of 26 wool half slabs. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, and 26. Like so. That should land one block short of the aft doors there. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, and 26. Now going back from these quartz top slabs right here, we'll be placing an upside down wool stair facing backwards on both sides here. Now we have a total of 24 upside down wool stairs facing towards the center of the aircraft, going back from this right here. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24. Just like that. The same thing on the right, of course. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24. Like so. Next, going back from this here, we have a full block of wool. That'll seal off the gap on the inside of those last wool half slabs right there. Next, we'll be taking our quartz upside down stairs again, placing an upside down stair facing in towards the center, going back from both of those blots of wool right there, just like this. And then back from this here, we have a total of four blots of wool. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. Half slab, going back from both of those there, with a block in towards the center. And we'll follow this up with a total of four wool blots going back. One, two, three, and four. Like so. And finally, we just have a torch on the rear face of that last block right there. This will be for the strobe anti-collision light right above the APU on the rear of the fuselage right there. And with that, that is everything for layer six. Alright, so for our final layer of the fuselage, we have layer seven. For layer seven, we'll be starting right in between these two forward doors right here, and also going back from that wool top slab right there. In the center of all this, we have a wool half slab right there to start this off, followed by one and two more going back. Out to either side of these last two, we'll be placing two more wool half slabs, just like this, leaving that first one exposed. Going back from the center here, we have a single quartz half slab for an antenna on the top, with a wool half slab out to either side. Next, we'll be placing six wool half slabs going back, one, two, three, four, five, and six, and box this off to either side. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. And going back from the center right here, we have a full block of the polished granite. Again, same material we used on the underside right there for the beacon light. Again, in default, just use a red concrete. This is the material we're using here. So, again, we'll half slab out to either side. And again, that's for the beacon light on the top of the fuselage right there, if I didn't mention it already. Back from this now, we have a wool half slab, and one more out to either side. Next, we'll be placing a wool stair facing backwards. Slap out to either side. It's for an antenna on the top again. Next, we'll be placing a wool stair facing backwards right here. This is for another antenna on the top right here. Followed by a half slab out to either side. Now we'll be placing row of 12 going back here. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. And box this off to either side. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. Now going back from the center right here, we'll be placing a wool stair facing forwards, followed by a total of nine blocks of wool going back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. This will be starting off the very base of the vertical stabilizer right here, which we'll be getting to next once we finish the fuselage. And then out to either side right here, back from these two exposed wool slabs right here, we have one, two, three, and four wool half slabs to finish off the fuselage layering there. One, two, three, and four. And with that, that is everything for Layer 7, and the fuselage of the 737-200 is done. Alright, so for the vertical stabilizer here, we'll be starting from this rearmost wool full block from the previous layer, from this row of 9 right here. From this rear block right here, we'll be placing two more going up, one and two, to make a total of three exposed wool blocks on that rear face there. Next, we'll place a wool top slab going back from that top block right there, then one and two blocks going up from it here. Let's come back at an angle from it here, we have three blocks of wool going up, then a wool top slab going back from that topmost block right there. And finally we have one and two blocks going up from that top slab there. 
That's working our way back towards the front. We'll be placing two blocks going forwards from that topmost block right there to make a total of three exposed on the top. Drop down a layer right here, we have one diagonal, then two going down right here, with a half slab forwards from the bottommost block. One block below that half slab there, a single half slab going forwards, and a block going down from that there. Next we'll be placing a block diagonal from that there, then another block diagonal, and finally a third diagonal, just like that. That should meet up right there with the row of nine from the previous layer. And we'll finish off this angle right here with a single half slab going forwards for that little bit of the eventual strike there. Now that we have that entire outline finished, we'll just be filling this all in with the wool block, just like so. Pretty quick and easy from there. And with this all filled in, we have one last detail to put in place. So, from this last wool full block that we placed right there in that outline, with the wool half slab going forwards from it here, we'll be coming a block up and to the right right here. So this middle block of those three diagonal. And then one block back right here. So this block right here, out to either side of this block, we'll be placing a stone button to either side, just like that. And with that, that'll finish off the vertical stabilizer. All right, so for the horizontal stabilizers, I'll be starting with the left side here first. We'll first be coming to this wool stair right here on the side of the fuselage for the stabilizer trim. And from the block above it right here, this last wool block, we'll be placing a cobblestone slab out to its side right here. Next, we'll be placing another cobblestone slab out at an angle right here. Next, come out at an angle and up a half slab layer, we have a single cobblestone top slab right there. And then, out at an angle again, another cobblestone top slab. Next, directly out to the side, a cobblestone half slab up a layer right here. Then, out at an angle, a cobblestone half slab right there. And then, out at an angle and up a half slab layer, one cobblestone top slab, just like this. Now going back from it here, we'll be grabbing the smooth stone slabs and placing a smooth stone slab going back from this right here, followed by one more towards the center of the aircraft. Next we'll be switching over to stone bird slabs for the elevator detailing on the rear edge here. So we'll be dropping a half slab layer down and one block forwards, and placing a row of two in towards the center, like this. Then directly in towards the center from this here, down a half slab layer, one stone brick top slab, like so. Then in towards the center, one stone brick top slab, like so. And then directly in towards the center, down a half slab layer, one and two stone brick half slabs, just like this. This should meet up with the second wool block forwards, just like this. And that'll finish off the horizontal stabilizer outline. So with the general horizontal stabilizer outline complete here, for our first layering outline, going forwards from this stone brick slab right here, that's upper layer, we'll be placing a single smooth stone slab right there. Then for our final layer right here, where we have this uh, stone bird slab that's up a layer right there, we'll be placing a single smooth stone slab going forwards from that. On a stabilizer this small, it's really nothing complicated when it comes to that, but uh, that's all that we have going on there for that outlining. So all that we're going to be doing now is just filling this in with the smooth stone slabs. So anywhere that's within the outline of the horizontal stabilizer and within the layering outline of the next layer up, is just going to get filled in with the smooth stone slabs, like this. Same thing for the next layer up here, this next layer, and then the final layer is already completed for us with that little tip at the uh, end of the, the uh, horizontal stabilizer there. And that is everything for the horizontal stabilizer, so we're just going to be repeating the exact same process on the right side of the aircraft. So, from this wool stair right here, the wool block above it right here, we have a cobblestone slab there, then one more out at an angle from it right here, then out at an angle and up a half slab layer, one cobblestone top slab there, then one more back at an angle, like so. Directly out to the side, one cobblestone half slab right there, up a half slab layer, then one more back at an angle, and finally one cobblestone top slab back at an angle and up a half slab layer, like so. Going back for this now, one smooth stone slab right there, then one more in towards the center. With the stone bird slabs now, one in towards the center and down a half slab layer, like so followed by one more directly in towards the center. Next, drop down a half slab layer right there, and then place one going diagonal in towards the center, and then drop down a slab layer and two directly in towards the center right there. That should meet up like so, just like it did on the left side. And for the layering outlines, for that first layer, we have one slab going forwards right there, and for the second layer, one slab going forwards right there with the smooth stone, just like this. 
and then fill all this in with the smoothstone slabs. Just like so. And with that, that is everything for the horizontal stabilizers. Alright, so for the wings here, we'll be starting right down here at the wing bots. From this upside down wall stair right here, at the intake vent at the front of the wing bots right here. From the second block back right here, that's the, well, the second upside down stair right there. Looks like the full block from the side. Out to the side of this here, we're going to be placing a cobblestone top slab. It should look just like this in terms of its placement. And again, that should line up right here with the wool top slabs from the very first layer that we built. So from this here, we're going to be placing a half slab on top of it, like this. And before we do anything else, we're going to be placing a torch on the forward face of this half slab right here. So, temporary block out to the front, torch, replace tool, select that, and... Whoops. <laughs> select and paste over, like so. This will be for the landing light embedded in the wing root right here. And going back from this now, we'll be placing two smooth stone slabs, like so. Next, two quartz slabs going back, switching over to quartz here for the overwing exit markings on the top. Then drop down a half slab layer right here, we have two quartz top slabs. Then down a half slab layer again here, two stone brick half slabs. Starting off the flap outline at the rear of the uh, wing right here, the trailing edge rather. Then going forwards from these stone brick half slabs, we have two quartz half slabs, like so. Just to kind of turn those into full blocks. Then one, two, and three stone half slabs going forwards, with a smooth stone that is. Then up a slab layer, one smooth stone top slab right there. So that'll give us this nice wing root outline to work with here. So, working our way out with the leading edge outline now. From this uh, cobblestone top slab right here, we'll be going out at an angle and placing a single cobblestone top slab right there, with a half slab on top. Repeat the same process again. So, cobblestone top slab out at an angle, and a half slab on top, like so. Next we have a single cobblestone top slab directly out to the side from that, or half slab rather, just like this. And then we'll be switching over to a temporary block. I'm going to be using the blue concrete for this. Just make sure to use any block that will kind of stick out from the gray of the wing, like this. This will be marking the start of the engine pylon here, where we'll be placing in the engine later after we finish the wing. So now going back from this, we have a single smooth stone slab right there, with a second temporary block towards the left, and one more smooth stone block going back from that right there. Next, a cobblestone half slab directly out to the side, then back at an angle and up a half slab layer, one and two cobblestone top slabs out to the side, then one cobblestone top slab, then back at an angle and up a half slab layer, one and two cobblestone half slabs right there. Next, two more cobblestone half slabs out to the side, one and two, then one cobblestone half slab out to the side right here. Then, going up a half slab layer, one and two cobblestone top slabs out to the side. And we'll be switching over to the polished granite slab once more now. And we have one polished granite slab right here, back at an angle. And this will be for the red nav light on the left wing tip right here. And this will be the very tip of the 737-200's wing. So, going back to this now, we have a single smooth stone slab right here. And then switching sides, we'll be working our way in towards the center with the trailing edge. First though, we'll be placing a temporary block behind that smooth stone top slab right there, and placing a torch in its place, just like that, with the replace tool. And this will be for the strobe light on the rear edge of the wingtip, just like this. So, working our way in towards the center from this, switching over to the stone bird slabs now for the aileron detailing. We'll be placing one and two stone bird slabs directly in towards the center. Then, one stone bird slab right there, in towards the center. Then directly towards the center, down a half slab layer, we have one uh, stone brick half slab right here. Then directly in towards the center, one smooth stone half slab. Next, in towards the center at an angle, again switching over to our stone brick slabs, this time for the flap outlining. We'll be placing one uh, stone brick half slab right there, again that's in at an angle. Then directly in towards the center, dropping down a half slab layer, we have one, two, and three smooth stone, or not smooth stone, <laughs> stone brick top slabs, just like this. Now, switching over to our temporary blocks again, going back from the leftmost block, this outermost half slab right here, we'll be placing two temporary blocks going back, just like this. And this will be the marker for our first flap track fairing here, which we'll again be getting to once we finish the wing itself. So, going in towards the center from this row of three now, 
we'll be placing another temporary block right there, and then one more below it to give a column of two, just like this. Next, forwards from the topmost block right here, we'll be placing another stone brick slab right there, top slab that is. Then directly in towards the center, we'll be dropping down a half slab layer and placing a single stone brick slab right there. Next, switching over to the smooth stone slabs for the bit of the engine pylon that's going in here. We'll be placing a smooth stone slab right there. Then, directly in towards the center from this here, we're going to be grabbing a jungle trapdoor and placing this right there. In the R-Team pack, as you can see here, this is a smooth stone textured blend. In default, just use an iron trapdoor instead, but this is what we're using here. And finally, dropping down a half slab layer and in towards the center at an angle, we have a single uh, smooth stone top slab right there. Then in towards the center from this here, we have a uh, stone brick half slab right there. Then drop down a slab layer and we have one stone brick half slab right there. So as you'll see here, that should meet up with the last stone brick slab right there from the wing root outline. That'll give us the entire outline of the wing to work with now. So once we have that all in place, we're now going to be putting in our layering outlines. Kind of the same as we did with the horizontal stabilizers, but this time with a bit more structure, since the wing is considerably larger. So, the first thing that we're going to be doing is coming to this quartz full block right here, our first layer up from this uh, stone brick slab layer right here, the very base of the wing. Back from this here, we'll be placing a stone brick slab out at an angle, just like this. For our next layer up here, where we have these two quartz half slabs right here, we'll be placing one quartz half slab back at an angle, then a smooth stone slab back at an angle, then a single stone brick slab back at an angle, and then one smooth stone slab back at an angle, just like that. And before we continue on with this, while well, I usually do the last bit of detailing uh, once we finish all of the outlines themselves, since this is kind of a smaller wing, I can just fill this in quickly. So just to finish off the flap detailing right here, going in towards the center from that stone brick slab right there, we'll be placing down a half slab layer, a stone brick slab right there, kind of filling in that gap right there. That'll just fill in that uh, block of the inboard flap section right there. Then to finish off the overwing exit markings, we'll be filling in this small section right here with the quartz half slabs. And then going forwards from that uh, quartz half slab that we placed right there in that layer, we have one more quartz slab going forwards, just like that, to make a shape looking like this. So, with that uh, little bit of detailing done, we can now just work solely on the layering outlines themselves. So, our next layer up, you'll see, is uh, all the way out at the leading edge of the wing right here, from this stone, or from this cobblestone slab, rather, right here. So for this, we're going to be placing a smooth stone slab directly in towards the center. Then, uh, going back right here, we have one and two smooth stone slabs going back. And then one smooth stone slab going back at an angle, switching sides this time going towards the outboard side. And that'll round off this layer like so, meeting up with that uh, stone brick slab right there. For our next layer up here, where we have this uh, cobblestone slab right here, We'll be going in towards the center from this with a uh, smooth stone slab right there. Then going out at an angle, we have one smooth stone slab right there. That'll connect up with that stone brick slab. And for our final layer right here, you'll see we already have this complete with that cobblestone slab beating up with the stone brick slab. So, that's all of the layering outlines done now. And all of the excess detailing is in place. The inboard flap section is the only place where we have the stone brick slabs doubling up into the inside of the wing. So we don't have anything more to add on to the outboard flap section there. So all that we're going to be doing now is just filling in these outlines with the smooth stone slabs. So, just as we did with the horizontal stabilizers, anywhere that's within the outlines of the wing and within the outlines of the layering for that layer, we're just going to be filling this in with the smooth stone slabs just like this. And once we have that all in place, that will finish off all of the layering for the top face of the wing. So with that done now, you'll see we now have this nice smooth face for the top face of the wing, but the underside isn't looking too hot. You'll see it's a little bit on the hollow side. So the next thing that we're going to be doing is working on the underside layering. So for this, kind of a similar process, we're just going to be working our way out with the layering outlines and then filling it all in afterwards. So for our first layer here, from the smooth stone uh, top slab right here, or half slab rather, we're going to be skipping these first two half slabs, then from this third half slab here, we'll be placing one directly out to the side here, 
followed by one more going back. And then switching over to our quartz half slabs here, since that's already a quartz top slab right there. Just to fill that in, we'll be turning that into a full block right there. And then one stone brick slab going back. That'll finish off that first layer right there. For next layer up, from this cobblestone slab right here, with the smooth stone slabs, we'll be placing one going directly back from this right here. And then uh, back at an angle, one, two, three, and four top slabs, like so. For our next layer out here, from this cobblestone half slab, going back from this, we'll be placing one, two, and three smooth stone half slabs. Then back at an angle right here, one single uh, smooth stone slab right there. And then we'll be turning that uh, stone brick top slab into a full block with a stone brick half slab below it, like so. That'll finish off that layer. For our next layer, where we have this cobblestone slab and the smooth stone slab directly behind it, we'll be placing one more going back from this right here, then back at an angle, one more smooth stone slab in that gap right there to make an outline looking like this. And our final layering outline is again already completed for us. So we have this cobblestone slab right there, the smooth stone slab behind it, and the stone brick slab going uh, back at an angle from it, just like that. And it all meets up perfectly. We don't need to add anything more to it there. So before we start filling in things now, I am going to add a quick bit of detailing here first. So we're going to be grabbing stone buttons, and underneath that smooth stone slab from that layering outline right there, we have a single stone button right there that'll be aligned parallel with the aircraft, like this. Next, skip one and two blocks in towards the center from this right here, and then go one block forwards. From this stone slab right here, we have another button on the underside right there. Again, that'll be aligned parallel with the aircraft, just like that. So with that, all we have left to do now to finish off the underside of the wing is just to fill this all in with the smooth stone slabs. So, just fill all of these gaps in here with the smooth stone slabs like this. That little bit there, that chunk there, and that will finish off the underside of the wing, and with it, the basic structure of the wing itself. So now that we have that all done, the next thing that we're going to be doing is putting in the flap track fairings. So for this, we'll be starting from this outermost mark that we put in place here on the trailing edge of the wing. So, where we have this row of two right here going back, we'll be knocking out this forward most of the two right there, leaving one kind of floating right there. Going forwards from this, we have a single smooth stone half slab. And then forwards from that half slab, we'll be placing a stone brick stair, upside down stone brick stair, facing forwards, just like this. So that'll give a general shape looking kind of like that for that flap track fairing there. And finally, we'll be placing a block on the forward face of that uh, stone brick slab, or not stone brick, the smooth stone slab directly in front of it like this. Torch on the forward face, select that with world edit and paste over, like so. And this is for an additional landing light that's on the underside of this flap truck fairing here. And it's also worth mentioning that on the real aircraft, it's actually more kind of in this location, so it would be in front of the stair there, but that can't really be replicated in Minecraft that well, so this is the best we can get that placement for it. But that's just an interesting detail that it's present on the aircraft. So, that's everything for the outermost flap truck fairing there. So for our next fairing in here, from this marking that's the uh, column of two right here, what we're going to be doing is knocking out this topmost block here of the two and replacing it with a smooth stone slab like this. Next, underneath that smooth stone slab, in place of this temporary block, we're going to clear that out and replace it with a jungle trapdoor like this, then place a second going forwards from it. And then to finish off the curvature of this fairing here, we're going to be grabbing the smooth sandstone stair, which in the aero team pad here is a smooth stone texture like this. And this will go uh, immediately forwards from this smooth stone full block right here. So knock out that top slab and replace it with an upside down stair facing forwards, just like that. And normally in default I would suggest using a stone bird stair or something like that in place of the smooth stone stairs, but that probably won't look as good here because it'll be a bit out of place both on the underside sticking out and it'll show through on the top face of the wing here. So in default I'd probably just recommend keeping that a top slab and sacrificing a little bit of accuracy on the shaping of the fairing. But if you can, that's much more nice. So that's everything for the flap track fairings in place then. On the 737-200 here, we only have these two to worry about here on the outboard side. The inboard flaps actually move along a uh, flap track on the outer edge of the engine pylon, or what starts out to connect at the rear edge that is there. 
And it's worth noting another little fun fact here on the inboard flaps before we move on. You'll see we have this kind of angled connection here where it cuts into the uh, flaps on the outer edge right there instead of just being a clean cut straight across. And that's because the smooth stone slab here is actually replicating a tab that kind of sticks out from the rest of the inboard flaps here. It connects directly into that flap track on the inner edge of that engine pylon there and doesn't actually deflect with the rest of the flaps. Instead, it only extends along its surface. It's a very interesting design and as far as I'm aware is unique to the 737-200. So that's a pretty cool thing to make note of in regards to the design of the actual aircraft. Anyways, with that rant out of the way, moral of the story is that we don't have a flap track fairing in there in the inboard flaps because we don't need it. So, that's everything for the flap track fairings. All that we have left to do now is just to knock out that last temporary block there on the uh, rear edge of that first flap track fairing that we put in place there. And once that's all cleared out, that is everything for the wings. So, all that's left to do now is just to mirror this on over to the right hand side of the aircraft. You can find a timestamp back to the start of the wings in the video description below if you need it. But other than that, just get that mirrored over, and I will see you once that's done. Alright, so this is what your finished wings look like copied on over to the right-hand side of the aircraft here. Here's a quick little fly around in case you need it, just to double-check all of your angles and make sure that it's all correct. But otherwise, there's just one last thing to put in place here. So we'll be swapping out the red nav light here on the right-hand side of the aircraft for its green counterpart. So for this, in the Aero Team pack here, that'll be the Prismarine Brick Slab. So we'll be knocking out that uh, polished granite slab right there, and replacing it with that green slab instead. In default, your best bet for this coloration will probably be the Dark Prismarine Slab, but this is far more accurate if you do have access to it. So with that done now, that is everything for the wings. Next, we'll be moving on to the engines. Alright, so for our two Pratt & Whitney JT-8D engines here, we'll be starting from this Ford most of the two temporary blocks right there. Down from this, we're going to be placing two blocks of wool going down, followed by two more out to the right side to create a 2x2 two two box, just like this. And we can clear away those temporary blocks to give ourselves a bit of room. Forwards from this here, we're going to be creating a 2x2 two two circle with the andesite stairs. So that'll be an upside down stair there facing towards the outside, followed by a regular stair on top, then an upside down stair and a regular stair right there in towards the inside. And that'll create the circle there at the front for the engine intake. So now going back from the bottom two, uh, this row of two on the bottom of that 2x2 two two box right there, back from this here, we're going to have a total of three wool blocks. One, two, and three. One, two, and three. Next, we'll be grabbing the birch trap doors. We're going to place two temporary blocks underneath that forward-most block right there. Underneath the 2x2 two two square, that is. And back from this, on both sides, we have two birch trap doors, just like this. One and two. And we'll clear away those temporary blocks. Now before we continue, on the outboard side right here, we'll be skipping this rear block right here, and then one block towards the front. On this block, we have a single stone button right there, just like this. Next, working our way back from the top block row right here, we have a total of five blocks going back from both of these right here. One, two, three, four, and five, and one, two, three, four, and five. Underneath this here, we have two upside down wall stairs facing out to the sides, just like this. Follow this up with a third row, right here, like so, and then a row of the regular stairs facing out to either side on top of that, like so. Next, to start off the engine exhaust, we'll be switching over to the andesite stairs again. We have a total of two uh, upside down stairs facing towards the rear, just like this, to kind of curve off on the underside, and then two regular stairs this time, just facing straight out to the sides, like so. Next, we'll grab the stone slab. We have two stone top slabs right there behind the upside down stairs, and follow this with two spruce trap doors right here. In the Aeroteam pack, the spruce trap doors are a stone texture like this to blend with the stone here. In default, just use iron trap doors instead, but <laughs> this is what we're using here, as always. So, on top of this now, switching over to these stone stairs, we have a stone regular stair facing out to either side, like so, and then a single row of two facing backwards, just like this. That'll curve off that bit at the top there. That's kind of the uh, pylon connecting in from the wing right there into the top of the engine exhaust right there as it tapers up from the base. So the last thing left to do now is to grab spruce signs. So on the outboard side here, we'll be placing a spruce sign to the, well, to the outboard side of both of those stairs right there, the corner stair and the regular stair. This is for an, a uh, metal armature connecting from the uh, engine cowling itself here to the tip of the engine exhaust right here. 
and this enables the movement of the bucket reversers, so they pivot around this axis here to kind of snap out and into place. And on the inboard side here, this is going to be offset, so we'll be placing this out to the side from the stone top slab right there, and the spruce trapdoor, just like this. So you'll see the arms are offset here diagonally, so the um, exhaust sections here, the bucket reversers themselves, will kind of move out diagonally at an angle, just like that. Very cool design, still can't get over it. But with that rambling aside, the last thing left to do to finish off this engine is to grab the light gray carpets, uh, which I don't have in my inventory. So I'll grab those quickly. And to the front of both of these smooth stone slabs right here, we have one light gray carpet each, just like this. So the JTATs don't actually have an engine pylon, they're connected straight into the uh, wing itself here, but that just flushes out that bit of the connection there. So with that, that's the engine done. So we'll just be repeating the same process on the right side of the aircraft. So I'm going to be taking this a bit faster since we've already done it once. Down from that uh, temporary block right there, 2x2 two two of the wool, going in towards the outside that is. Clear out those temporary blocks now, and a 2x2 two two circle with the andesite stairs. 1, 2, and 3 back, 1, 2, and 3 with the wool. Two temporary blocks underneath the forward blocks there. Two birch trapdoors going back, two birch trapdoors going back, and clear that out. And I don't believe I actually mentioned this on the left side, those birch trapdoors there are to kind of round out the bulge at the front of the engine that the JT-8D has as it kind of bulges out here and then tapers back. So then a uh, stone button there. So, skip that last block right there, then one block forwards, stone button to the outboard side right here. Then going back, one, two, three, four, and five blocks. One, two, three, four, and five blocks. Two wall stairs out to either side, just like this. Then a third row. And then a row of regular stairs on top of it. Switch over to the andesite stairs. Two upside down stairs there facing backwards. Then two on top, regular stairs facing out to either side. Next we have the two stone top slabs there. Then two stone trap doors. Two stone stairs facing out to either side. Two stone stairs facing backwards. Then we'll grab the spruce signs. Again, on the outboard side, that's on the top half of the block right here. So out to either side, or out to the outboard side, rather, from those two stone stairs right there. Then on the inboard side, from the stone top slab and the stone trap door right there. And lastly, at the front of the wing here, two light gray carpets, like so. That will finish off the installation of the Pratt & Whitney JT-8Ds. Alright, so with that, that is everything for the exterior of the inflate aircraft. The next thing that we're going to be moving on to here is the interior. So for this, we're just going to be stepping our way inside the 737-200 here. And the first thing that we're going to be starting with the interior here is the cargo holds before we cap them off. So, starting right up here at the forward cargo door, which is this row of two of the quartz full blocks right here. Forwards from this here, we're going to be skipping one block forwards right here. And on the second block forwards with the wool right here, we're going to be placing a single block of wool right there, just like this. Next, going back from this here, we're going to be placing a single stone button. This will be aligned parallel with the aircraft. And then a stone pressure plate. We're going to repeat this a, a couple more times here. So we have a stone button, stone pressure plate, stone button, pressure plate, and a stone button right there. That'll give you a total of three of the pressure plates and four stone buttons. And that last one should land right between the two diorite blocks there from the air intakes at the wing box. And lastly, we'll just be placing a block of wool on top of that beacon light right there. That'll finish off the forward cargo hold right there, and we'll be tapping it off with the cabin floor when we get to that. So for the aft cargo hold now, this is very simple. So you'll see we have these two blocks of quartz there for the um, uh, aft cargo door, and then the two trap doors in towards the center, or the slabs if you had to use them. And you see now why we had to do that. So the aft cargo hold on this aircraft is very short, so all that we're going to be doing for this is just placing a stone button forwards from that trapdoor there, and then cap that off with a block of wool forwards from that. That'll just create that little enclosed space right there, which again we'll be tapping off with the cabin floor when we get to it. So with that all done now, we'll now be moving all the way up to the nose of the aircraft here and putting in the flight deck. So for this, what we're going to do is first grab a grey wool right here, and in this gap right here, all the way at the front, we'll be placing a grey wool right there, and then dragging this all the way back right here, just a few blocks there, probably in line with the forward doors for now. And we'll just close off that little gap right in there. So with the floor filled in now, we'll be coming back up to the nose again here, and we're next going to be grabbing the Emerald Ore, which, interestingly enough, in the Aero Team pack here, is a kind of dark grey texture right here, a little bit darker than grey concrete. 
in default, you can just obviously use Grey Concrete instead, but that's a little utility we have here that we'll be making use of. So, next, going back from this, we'll be grabbing the diorite slab. We have a diorite half slab there on the bottom block with a diorite half slab above it. Now, that's a half slab there on the next full block above it in between the glass, just like this. So that'll give you the little indentation there for the uh, main instrument panel below, as well as the protrusion of the MCP above right here. Next, going back, we'll be placing a dark oak fence gate, opened up facing forwards, behind that bottommost half slab right there. That'll kind of replicate the helix to the best that we can in such a small space as this knows. It's quite tiny and cramped in here, but that's what we have going on there. Next, out to either side right here, on top of these exposed blocks of wool, we have a stone brick stair facing forwards, with a stone half slab on top of it. This is a uh, seat design here, and 1.5 to 1 scale. There's a little bit of the seat there with the headrest on top of it, like so. And it doesn't look the most comfortable here from the inside, since it's literally face first into the glass, but again, we're doing the best we can with uh, such a small scale and such a cramped cockpit. So, with those seats in place now, we'll let's be grabbing a birch door and placing that right here in between them. This will be on the rear edge of that block, just like this. And then finally, to finish this off and connect it in with the roof of the aircraft here, we'll be knocking out that wool top slab in that place right there. And then, my apologies, doors have a bit of an interesting time on this server. It's been like this for forever, I've never been able to figure out why, but uh, I'll just break through here a little bit. So we'll be replacing that wool top slab right there with a wool upside down stair facing forwards. And so when the uh, cabin door is closed there, it'll connect in with the roof of the aircraft, and we won't have a hole showing through. Anyways, with that, that is everything for the flight deck. So we'll just be popping our way back here, and we'll let's be working on the forward galleys. So for this here, the first thing we're going to be doing is placing a dead tube coral fan on the rear edge of that rightmost seat right there, going back from that uh, stone brick stair. In the routine pack here, as you can see, this is a stone brick, or smooth stone rather, vertical slab like this. In default, you can probably just use full blocks in here, but the curvature is more realistic otherwise, or the shaping rather. So that's what we're going to be doing, is uh, using a world edit trick to place it in on the rear edge of that stone slab right there as well, because we quite obviously can't place it in, in the correct orientation there. So, temporary block above, slash ripple zero, select and, whoops, paste over. There we go. So that'll finish off that little bit of the forward galleys right there. That's what we're going to do here, is grab two general trapdoors. We're going to place these on top of each other right here, and opened up facing towards the rear of the aircraft immediately behind the left captain's seat right here. And then uh, on the inner side of this right here, kind of on the center block of the aircraft, we'll be placing a birch door right there to close that off. That'll be the forward lavatory right in there. Next, out to, or rather, in from either of these um, uh, forward doors right here, we're going to have a lever on the center block of the three, so technically the topmost of the two exposed full blocks right there and a lever right there as well. And in from this quartz top slabs right here, the uh, top slabs from the forward doors, uh, in line with this uh, half slab layer on the ceiling of the aircraft here, we'll be skipping one and two half slabs right here, and underneath the third here, we have a birch trap door right there. Next, we'll skip a block going back, and place a second right there. This is going to be repeating back for a total of 13 of these trap doors here. So we have two existing already here. Skip a block, that's three. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13. And that'll finish off the detailing there on the ceiling of the aircraft. The 737-200 has a rather interesting architecture on its interior, with a kind of ribbed connection going all the way down here between the overhead bins, between the uh, lighting on the ceiling of the aircraft, so that's what that's kind of looting towards there. So with that all done now, I'll just uh, throw away all of these quickly. We're next going to be grabbing the endstone brick stairs and slabs. We'll be moving on to a quick business class section up here at the front. So, immediately behind this uh, bulkhead here, we'll be skipping this block back right here. On this, well, not skipping a block, that's the block that those trapdoors are on. So on the second block back from it right here, we have an endstone brick stair facing forwards, with an endstone brick half slab on top of it, just like this. In default, uh, nether brick will probably be your best bet for this, but this is a texture we have here that we'll be using. So, same thing on the right side of the aircraft, and stone brick stair and slab there. Next, we'll skip a block going back, and a stair and slab there. Stair and slab, so that'll give us two rows of this business class seating here. And that's all that we have going on there. 
Again, the 737-200 is a very short aircraft by modern standards, so uh, there's not too much at the front here for the business class section. But with that, we'll just be throwing those away now. And next we'll be grabbing the prismarine stairs and slabs. And in the air team pack here, this is a blue texture. This is what we use for our seats in our default, uh, kind of standard economy class section. Now if you're in default, you won't have access to the navy blue colors like this. So instead, you'll probably want to switch out stone brick or something of the gray spectrum for your economy class seating. But this is what we use here at the air team for our standard interior configurations that aren't airline specific. So, for this, for the economy class seating here, we're going to be skipping two blocks going back from the business uh, seats right there. And on the third block here, we have a prismarine stair facing forwards. Again, that's a two block gap right there, not a single block gap as it is between the seats regularly. And again, slab on top of that. And the same thing on the right side there, so stair and slab. Next, we'll be skipping another block going back. Another the second block there, stair and slab. This will be repeating back for a total of ten of these seats. So we have two here already. That's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten, like so. And we'll repeat the same process on the right side. So that's one that we're starting with now. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Now behind these seats here, we're going to be grabbing the smooth stone full block, and we'll be placing a row of two going up right here, behind both of these, to seal off the uh, bulkheads there at the rear. And then just to kind of seal off the floor in here, we'll be grabbing the gray carpet. And in front of that last row of seats right there, you'll notice we have the wool seeping through there, as uh, there was enough space for the gray full blocks to be in place. So on top of this, we're just very simply going to be dropping a gray carpet right there on both sides to seal that off. And in between these uh, smooth stone columns here, we'll be doing kind of the same thing. So one right there in the center, and then bring that two more back for a row of three right there. Finally, for the aft galleys, with the smooth stone block right there, we'll be placing one more going back from that, uh, or well, one smooth stone going back from that gray carpet right there, right in that gap there. Next, on top of the wool block immediately behind it, we have a smooth stone block right there. And then above it, you'll see in the space here, we'll be skipping a block forwards and then placing a smooth stone full block right there. Next, we'll grab a dark oak trapdoor and place that on top of that uh, bottom smooth stone full block right there in the arrow team pack. This is a dark gray birch texture, the same one as the diorite texture. In default, again, just to use an iron trapdoor, but this is what we are using here. That'll finish off the... actually, that won't finish off the detailing for the aft galley. We have one more thing. We're going to grab a, an acacia button here. This is going to go forwards from the top smooth stone full block right there. In default, you can use a dark oak button instead, but uh, that's what we have there. Lastly, we'll grab a lever, and we'll be doing the same detail that we did up at the front for the handles on the door. So inside, uh, towards or from both of these towards full blocks right here, we have a lever right there, just like that. So that's for the handles on the doors right here. And with that, that is everything for the interior of the 737-200. So with the interior complete, that is everything for the in-flight aircraft. So the next thing we're going to be moving on to here is the extended landing gear. Now, if you are building this aircraft in flight with the landing gear retracted, then that is everything, and you are done with this tutorial. Congratulations. Otherwise, let's move on to building the landing gear. Alright, so for the landing gear here, we'll be coming in line with the nose here, in line with the uh, tripwire hooks here for the pitot tubes. And we'll be following this ring around here towards the center layer right here. You'll see we have this wool top slab here at the very front of the first layer that we placed. What we're going to be doing is knocking out that wool top slab right there, and then one more going back from it there. That'll expose this block here on the inside. In its place, to fill up this gap, we'll be placing a cobblestone stair upside down facing forwards, like so. Then we're going to be knocking out two wool full blocks going forwards from it right here, and follow this up with two cobblestone upside down stairs facing forwards, just like this. Now going down from the first cobblestone stair that we placed, the rearmost one right here, we'll be placing a single mossy stone brick wall right there, and in default just use an andesite wall instead, but this is what we have here. It's a uh, regular stone texture like this, and we'll follow this up with an iron bar facing towards the front, like so. Next, going down from this stone brick wall right here, we have a black wool full block right there on the ground, with a stone button out to either side for the nose wheel. So with the gear struts and wheel well all in place and everything there, the last thing for the nose wheel is just to grab the blocks of quartz, all of the quartz materials here, and put in the open gear doors. So for this, what we're going to be doing here is out to the side of this uh, stone brick wall here, 
we'll be placing a regular quartz stair to either side, facing out to the side like this, followed by a block of quartz towards the front, and then a quartz top slab going forwards from that there. So that'll give that gear door opened up to either side, uh, on both sides like this. And then to seal off this gap here above it, what we're going to do is place two wool stairs facing towards the outside in that, uh, in place of those two wool top slabs, like so. And you'll notice this foremost wool stair right there corners off with the cobblestone uh, stair right there, the one that's facing forwards. So what we can do with world edit is just grab the regular stair right there and paste over, like so. Otherwise, if you don't have access to world edit or the uh, debug stick and can't get that to stay in place there, uh, you can just probably replace that upside down stair there with uh, perhaps a cobblestone full block to get a little bit of the detailing in place, or maybe even a top slab in that place right there uh, would probably work better. And that'll allow that stair then to remain facing uh, regularly out to the sides. But this here is a more preferable alternative. And the last thing we'll be doing here is just using a little bit more world edit to make sure that that wall there stays regularly connected and not connected out to either side to the uh, gear doors right here. So for this, we're going to grab the walls once more, place two back to back. We're going to select the rearmost one with world edit there, and then paste it over that mossy stone brick wall right there. That'll just keep it more uh, flushly connected with both the um, its mounting point and the support strut going forwards right here. And that is it for the nose gear. Alright, so for the main landed gear now, what we're going to be doing is coming to the inside right here, underneath the uh, underbelly right here, where we have these two nether brick top slabs for the underside of the uh, wheels right here, as retracted into the fuselage. We're just going to be knocking those out on both sides right here. Next we'll be knocking out the wool top slab directly out to the side from that there, and I'll continue on with the right side there when we get to it after I finish the left side. So, from this here, in this space, what we're going to be doing is coming out to the side from this, and, let's see, counting from this second quartz full block out right here, below this, we'll be placing a mossy stone brick wall right there. Next, below this, we're going to be placing a black wall as a temporary block, followed by a dead fire coral fan facing towards the inside of the aircraft, like this. Next, we're going to select that with world edit and paste over the black wall temporary block, like so. And that'll give the two offset, uh, kind of half wide wheels right here for the uh, dual landing gear body of the uh, main landing gear right here. And I have to say it a lot since we do use quite a lot of advanced tricks with this build, but if you are without world edit, you can probably just get away with a single black wool block underneath the wall right there. But this is a much nicer uh, replication of the actual aircraft. So, with that, going out to the side from that uh, single exposed quartz full block right there, we'll be knocking out that stone brick, or smooth stone rather, top slab right there, and replacing it with a uh, smooth sandstone stair facing out to the side right here. Again, the smooth stone stair, like this. Again, in default, stone brick stair will probably do the job, but that's what we have going there followed by a wool top slab underneath, like that. And that'll be the little bit of the gear door there, sticking out right there, the underside of the wing connecting in, and that little bit of the fuselage that separates out and uh, seals off when retracted. With that in place now, we'll let's be hollowing out the underside a little bit more here. So we'll grab the quartz stairs, we're going to knock out these two quartz full blocks right here, and replace them with quartz upside down stairs facing towards each other, just like this, to open up that space a little bit more there. Next, we're going to uh, grab a temporary block right here. We'll place that underneath that uh, exposed one right there, the innermost uh, <laughs> quartz stair there. And let's see, we're just going to place a lever anywhere, facing towards the outboard side of the aircraft like this. We're going to select that with world edit, and then paste over that temporary block like so. So that'll be the support strut there connecting in from the shock strut into the uh, uh, center of the aircraft like this. Next, we're going to grab world edit again, We'll be placing two of the mossy stone brick walls facing towards each other, like this, side by side. We're going to select the outermost one right here, and then paste over the regular one right there. And what that's going to do is both balance it off uh, more nicely, kind of straddling the um, wheels a bit more centrally, I suppose, and also connect it with that support strut there that we just put in place. So with that complicated mess out of the way, now we can just uh, kind of do a little bit of smooth sailing with the wheel well right in here. So. In from that upside down port stair there, we're going to be knocking out that wool block. We'll replace that with an uh, upside down andesite stair facing in towards the center right there, and follow this up with two andesite top slabs in towards the center. Next, uh, going forwards from this here, we're going to have two andesite full blocks to seal that off on the front edge. 
Then we have a, I believe this is a stone birch stair. This will be an upside down stone birch stair facing towards the front, immediately behind the center top slab right there. And then we have a wool stair, an upside down wool stair facing forwards uh, out to the side from that stone birch stair right there. And we're going to knock out the wool top slab below it, just like this. That'll give that space in there for the wheel well. That's it for the main landing gear design. So we're just going to mirror this on over to the right side. So, same as we did before here. Again, I'm going to take this a little bit faster. So, knocking out that wool top slab there. We're next going to count our way out to this second, uh, towards full block right there. Bossy stone brick wall going down. Then we're going to place our temporary block below this right here, followed by a dead fire twirl fan towards the center. Select that, paste over the temporary block. Then we're going to place a lever on the underside of that towards full block, facing towards the wall right there. We're going to do this the other way around here, actually placing that lever first and then getting the uh, stair in afterwards, just to give that a whirl too. So, upside down towards stair there, facing towards the outside. Select that, then paste over the towards full block above that lever right there. And then we can just replace that other towards full block with a stair facing into it, just like this. Next we'll connect off that uh, stone brick wall right there. So, seal that off like so, get it uh, facing towards the inner edge of the aircraft, same as we did before. Then we're going to replace that uh, stone top slab right there with a smooth stone stair facing out to the outboard side of the aircraft, and follow that with a wall top slab below it, like so. Now in towards the center here for the wheel well, knock out that wall full block, replace it with an andesite stair facing in towards the center, then an andesite slab uh, in towards the center again right there, that'll connect up with the center. Then we have an upside down wall stair to the side of that stone stair right there, facing forwards, and knock out the top slab below it. And with that, that is everything for the landing gear. So, with the landing gear installed, that is everything for the aircraft itself. As I mentioned back at the start of the video, the last thing we have for this tutorial is the design for the opened bucket reversers. If this is something you'd like to include yourself, then that's what we'll be moving on to next. Otherwise, if you'd like to just leave the aircraft as it is here, then that is everything. Congratulations! You're done with this tutorial, and you can skip right on ahead to the end of the video. Anyways, with that all out of the way, let's move on to those bucket reversers. Alright, so for the opened bucket thrust reversers, we'll be coming to the rear edge of the JT-80 engines here, and in line with this uh, stone brick stair here, or the stone stair rather, everything past this with the stone is just going to get cleared out. So, uh, removing the signs as well, this will give us this as a starting point. So, next we're going to be switching over to the diorite slabs, we're going to be placing two diorite top slabs, forwards, or backwards rather, from the andesite upside down stairs right there, followed by two half slabs on top. This will give a darker uh, metal appearance for the kind of exposed inside of the engine right here. Now going back from this, starting on the outboard side right here, behind the this left top uh, diorite slab right there, we're going to be placing a stonebert stair facing towards the left. Conversely, on the bottom right, we have an upside down stonebert stair facing towards the right just like this. Now here's where we can put in place those uh, spruce signs again, or the stone signs rather, on the bottom edge of the <laughs> inboard side right here, and on the top edge of the outboard side, just like this, to connect across. And then to finish off the buckets themselves, what we're going to do is first we're going to place a temporary block in between the uh, those two stubborn stairs right there on the upper right block right here. Next, we're going to grab the spruce trapdoors, we're going to close one against the rear edge, and one along the inboard edge, just like this. And on the top, it's going to be actually a smooth stone, or a regular stone half slab, like this. And the reason it's a half slab here is because the top bucket reverser has a chunk of the engine pylon itself connecting in that uh, rotates out with it there, a little protrusion in that. And with that, we can knock out that temporary block there. Next, we're just going to repeat that same process on this block right here, so temporary block in there. And actually, we're just going to drop another temporary block right there to get a spruce trapdoor on the underside of it right here. And as I mentioned, on the underside, that uh, bit of the pylon isn't present, so it's just a trapdoor layer there without being thickened. And we'll just close a trapdoor against the rear edge and against the outboard edge, just like this. And we'll clear away that temporary block. Like so, that's it for the thrust reverses. So, we're just going to repeat the same process in mirror fashion on the right side here. So, clear out all of these stairs and the signs as well, like so. Once we have that, two diorite top slabs, two diorite half slabs on top. Next here we have an upside down stone stair facing towards the center on the bottom uh, inboard block right there. 
and then a regular stonebird stair facing towards the outside on that uh, outermost top block right there, looking just like this basically. Next, grab your signs, two against there, and two against there, two connected across. Temporary block on the top left right there, top inboard side that is. Stone slab on top, and close the spruce trap doors against the uh, inboard side and the rear edge like so, and clear away that temporary block. And then temporary block right there on the bottom. Spruce trap door on the underside of that block, and close the spruce trap door against the rear edge and against the outboard edge like so, and then clear away that temporary block. So with that, that's the design for the opened bucket thrust reversers complete. And with that, the 737-200 is done. So, congratulations on completing the Boeing 737-200. Thank you so much for choosing an aero team design. We hope that you enjoyed building it, and we hope that you enjoy having it as a part of whatever project you are using this for. Do feel free to use this in any kind of publicly available project you like, given that you, of course, provide proper credit to the aero team for these designs. So. If you have built this aircraft, let us know. We'd love to see how you're using our designs. Tag us on Twitter, at AeroTeamMC, or share it with us on our Discord server. If you enjoyed, please do consider subscribing to the AeroTeam channel to be the first to see our new aircraft when they come out. Anyways, that is just about it. So, thank you all for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one.